Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to set up Jellyfin on a Raspberry Pi. So Jellyfin is a Plex alternative, and I actually just created a video recently on how you could set it up on a Synology NAS, but today we're going to look at how to set it up on a Raspberry Pi 4 in specific. So this will technically work on any Raspberry Pi, but you're going to have a hard time using any of the older ones because they're just not powerful enough. The Raspberry Pi 4 is kind of the baseline for something like this, and then if there's ever any other Raspberry Pis that are released, I'm sure they'll run it even better. So this tutorial in specific is for people who don't have a device that's running 24-7 like a NAS or a PC or a server or anything like that. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is so low powered, it's very easy to set this up and it works well enough that you can actually use it. So this is really for people, like I said, that don't have anything else running. Um, if you do have something running, the chances are very high that it's more powerful than the Raspberry Pi. And for that reason, you're probably better off installing Jellyfin on that device um, because you're not really going to be able to do much hardware transcoding, if any. I know that some people were able to get it working and it kind of worked, uh, but you know you don't want to do that on a Raspberry Pi. If you need to set up any hardware transcoding, you need to do it on a more capable device. So with that said, I'm making the assumption that the majority of people that will be implementing this are going to be implementing it by having their Raspberry Pi run with an external hard drive attached to it with their media. Now technically Jellyfin will work by connecting to a network share, you can mount that network share, but I'm not going to go through that because if you have a NAS device or a different device running that's hosting your media files, you're probably better off installing Jellyfin there. So the very specific use case that we're going to be looking at today is installing Jellyfin on a Raspberry Pi with an external hard drive attached to it so that you can stream media inside and outside of your network if you'd like. So real quick, I have written instructions in the description that will guide you through this entire process as well if you'd like to follow along there. So since we're going to be attaching an external hard drive with our media files, what we're going to do is we're going to create a directory where our media files are mounted. So we're going to do that, and then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the UUID of that uh, external hard drive. And the reason for this is because we need that external hard drive to mount every single time we boot this Raspberry Pi. So as soon as you do that, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to go into the FSTAB file, and you can add a new line to that document with the UUID, the mount location, and then the drive type. So I'm using NTFS, but if you're using ext4 or something else, you'll have to put that there. And then we have defaults and no fail. No fail just means that if you try and boot your Raspberry Pi without this external hard drive attached to it, it will still boot. So as soon as you do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna restart your Raspberry Pi. And as soon as it comes back up, you should be able to navigate to that specific mounted folder and you should see your media files inside of there. If you didn't, then your external hard drive did not mount properly, so you'll have to go through the steps again and see what might have messed up there. From there, there are a few commands that we have to run, and like I said earlier, in the written instructions that I have, I have all of these commands so that you can easily copy and paste them. Uh, but as soon as you run all of those commands, Jellyfin will be fully installed. So the way that you get to it is you get to it by navigating to your Raspberry Pi's IP address and port 8096. So as soon as you do that, and it'll take a few minutes, so after it fully installs, give it a few minutes, but you should be able to access Jellyfin by navigating to your Raspberry Pi's IP address and port 8096. From there, you're gonna have to pick your language. You're gonna then create a uh, user account. And at the next section here, this is where we're gonna have to add our media libraries. So you're gonna have to do this for every type of media that you have, meaning movies, TV shows, music, etc. But after you pick your content type, what you're going to do is you're going to add a new folder and then you're going to navigate to that mounted folder that we created and then select the correct media type. Like I said, do that for all of your media types and then you're going to move on and you're going to set your metadata settings and then it's going to ask you to configure your remote access. So I highly recommend that you do not select the second option uh, which utilizes UPnP. If you are interested in configuring remote access, check out my video from last week on how you can configure Nginx Proxy Manager on a Raspberry Pi. You can run it on the same Raspberry Pi that you're running this, and that will allow you to connect securely to Jellyfin from anywhere in the world. It's just a much better way of doing this. So after you do that, all you have to do is click Finish, and then everything is actually set up. 
So at this time, your media library will start to crawl all of that metadata. You'll start to see some of your uh, movie or album covers, etc., whatever media type you have, all the metadata will start to be crawled. Um, give it some time, and as soon as it's done, you'll be able to download the Jellyfin application on your phone or on any of the TV devices, and you'll be able to connect back to this uh, Jellyfin server that we just created, and you should be able to stream all of your uh, media files. So like I said earlier, the Raspberry Pi is not a very powerful device for this in specific. So you might have some issues if multiple people are trying to stream from it. But for the most part, if you're just running one stream, it should run perfectly. I tested it out and everything works perfect for me, but I did not test multiple streams because if you're using this, you probably don't want to do that in the first place. So that wraps up the tutorial for today. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If this helped you out, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, guys.